President Biden seems to be looking to jumpstart his green agenda. There are reports now he may declare a climate emergency as early as this week. The White House is taking a victory lap as well over the falling gas prices, which have come down only 50 cents over the past month. Remember, we're still hotter than $2 ahead of where we should be. The Biden administration still won't take responsibility, though, for why the prices were surging in the first place. We have seen gas prices go down in, in the past 34 straight days. Aren't they still $2 go down. a gallon higher than when you guys took office, though? For, first of all, we have to look at the imp of how we got there, right? We, you think about the, the war that Russia has taken on in Ukraine. Kaylee, where's her binder? Okay. <laughs> she needs one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at the numbers for ourselves. On President Biden's inauguration day, gas costs an average of $2.39 a gallon. Today, the same gallon costs $4.59. That's with it plummeting after hitting a record high of all time, more than $5 a gallon just last month. Now the president has never taken the blame for any of it. Instead, he's been leading the charge, pointing fingers at the Russian president. Well, watch. The current spike in gas prices is largely the fault of Vladimir Putin. Putin's price hike. Putin's price hike. Putin's price hike. This is a Putin price hike. If food and gas prices are going to be elevated by Putin's price hike, you want to know why prices are so high? Well, there are a number of reasons having to do with Putin's war in Ukraine. Well, Putin didn't have anything to do with a mismanaged baby formula crisis. Right, he didn't. And they were asked in the White House press briefing room yesterday about this awkward pivot from the Putin price hike. We all know that's not true. Gas went up by a dollar before the war to the Biden bump, where we are now extolling Biden for two dollars off our gas. But still, we're two dollars above what the average was when he came in on Inauguration Day. I will say, you know, you looked at me when the press secretary gave that answer. Yeah, they need to have better messaging, and this means just acknowledging the pain of the people. Um, during COVID, that's what I did from the podium. This was a time of national mourning. That's what you needed to do. That's what the time asked for and called for, and that is just such a time when the economy is so bad. It's not the tragedy of the delayed treadmill, as Saki said. It's not go to kickboxing class and get a margarita, as Saki said. It's not you're well positioned for the economy, as Green Jean-Pierre said. It's, hey, you're hurting. We get it, and we're doing everything we can. I often look at you. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that if you were standing there, it would be a different situation. First of all, they'd be screaming at you. Yes. The, the press <laughs> corps. Um, Brian, let's talk brass tacks about where we are with getting that price to, to be lowered. So the president has made two huge oil grabs from our reserves without right. putting any back because we're not producing at the level right. that we should right. be. Yeah, and it didn't do anything, by the way. He should not be taking credit for prices coming down to 450 and... He should not be bragging about 450. I don't think there's anybody on his staff who drives a truck mm -hmm. because if they did, they would know 450 at the pump is not good news. That's expensive. The reason gas prices have come down is because the world's concerned about recession. We're looking down the barrel of a recession. So are they using less? They're, they're going fewer places. If you've got a recession, you're buying less oil, the price of oil wow. comes down. But we should not be celebrating that. It's not great news to go from inflation to recession. There's a third option. It's called prosperity. This administration doesn't know how to define that. And so they're in this weird spot of defending 450 a gallon, a bad spot to be. They put themselves What in. else do they have? Well, they have not. They have nothing the economy, except a U-turn. Really. Except a U-turn, which they can't <laughs> do, and so they're stuck here, not anticipating the follow-on question, which is, well, gee, if Putin caused the price to go up, if greed caused the price to go up, is that what caused the price to go down? No, of course it isn't. All right, see Forbes last hour on the Faulkner Focus. This uh, demand has gone down for gasoline, went down 3% in the first quarter, still 10% below it was before the COVID crisis hit. So this is not because production is soaring. The Biden administration is still doing everything it can to hurt uh, oil and gas production in this country. We should be increasing production. Why aren't we the biggest oil producer in the, in, in the world? Why aren't well, we, we, know fast, why. We, why aren't we fast permitting liquid natural gas plants so we can get gas to Europe? They're going to have a tough winter if the Russians mm. cut back on gas. What are we doing? We're just standing and sitting on our hands and proclaiming victory when you get a good week in gasoline prices. Pretty pathetic. Kennedy. Yeah, so does that mean the war in Ukraine is over? Does that mean that, that 
uh, Putin has been thwarted. No, that's not what that means at all. And Brian's absolutely right. This is not cause for celebration because by the same token, uh, the president is also talking about declaring a climate emergency. So what, what does, does that mean, by the way? Like, what, what, what does that change? He's begging Venezuela, one of the world's dirtiest oil producers, to help us out, Kennedy. Yeah. He's not he's lying when he says he is dedicated to the Green New Deal. Yeah, he also went and fist bumped uh, MBS yeah. in Saudi Arabia. And you know, there are uh, victims' families from 9-11 looking at that, going, you know, th this has never been made right. And then you have the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, not to men mention the myriad of human rights abuses uh, that Saudi Arabia is perpetrating, and the president is normalizing that with a Habro fist bump. Uh, it is completely wrong, but, you know, what's even more disconcerting and kind of laughable about this is Saudi Arabia and, and OPEC Plus are like, yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not releasing anymore. He did not get, he did not get a deal, he did not get a promise. He did not get any numbers. Uh, so that was not a, a world victory tour for him, not to mention Venezuela. But what does a declaration of emergency mean for the climate? It means forced austerity. So what will forced austerity do uh, to a recession? Well, that could cause a global depression. It wouldn't be good. Let's, let's talk about forced austerity, which is the new nomenclature from Kennedy that I'm going to hashtag after the show. <laughs> um, I, don't, I think we, we have a lot of austerity right now. You have people who can't afford to buy the basics, so they're going to cut back on things. Livelihoods are starting to change. Yeah, and we've had this conversation for a while, and we knew there would be sort of a tipping point before people would pull back. There was all this pent-up demand after the pandemic, and we were all so oppressed that we felt like we wanted to go out, we wanted to spend money, and we kind of would do it at any cost, even paying $5 a gallon for gasoline. But once the summer is over, um, I think people are going to pull back because they're starting to feel it. I watched these numbers about what it's costing us, uh, families of four, on a yearly basis. We started at 3500 then we were over 5000 Now the estimates are over six thousand dollars a year that's a tax on american families and that is eating a big part taking a big bite of, out of budgets you know i'll tell you the part that really concerns me are the wages that that people now are starting to look at going back to work and they're they're not going to realize the benefits of that labor right. after having sat out for so long and they are eating through their savings yeah. right now yeah, when wages don't keep pace with inflation, that's a dire circumstance. On the heels of a prosperous economy where wages were growing for marginalized groups. Uh, all right, so former President Trump, communications. You're there. You had to have been looking down the road at what this would look like post-pandemic because we had a vaccine. He was putting some things in motion. Yeah. What was being talked about? Um, well, not throttling the economy, allowing the economy to thrive. He deregulated, so continuing deregulation, continuing detaxation, giving businesses a single signal, we're not out here to raise the corporate tax on you. All of those things Biden did in reverse, and look at what's happened. And this climate emergency he may announce, that's suicide, because essentially that would allow him to stop drilling. It would allow him to stop domestic oh. imports of oil and start renewable gas. So, yeah. Good, good job. Try that. Let's see what happens and to gas prices. And it's so thoroughly anti-democratic. Just to be clear, the Senate won't pass a law because the Senate doesn't reflect the people's will on this. So what is the president going to do instead? He's going to decree it. That's not democratic. Yeah. That's not the system that we live in. It's going to kill the economy, but it sets the precedent that we don't make laws the president decrees them. Last thought? I, I leave my last thought with Brian Brenberg. I mean, Brian, not my oh, 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 greatest things I know. I think oh, he's one of the so best people on TV at explaining the stuff, breaking it down, and making it understandable. We we know we're hurting. He's so great at explaining why.